You, Bucko Drink, have stolen fire from the gods. The blueprints for the Arco Tech Spore seemed nonsensical at first, but when the final component was put into place, the structure began to palpably thrum with power. Mm. Although it remains dormant for now, your colonists cannot glance at it without hearing faint music, and gazing too long results in waking dreams of lives they have never lived. A cryptic poem transmitted by your ship's AI, which it does not remember writing, seems to suggest that the embryonic Arco consciousness contained within the spore still lacks the will, volition, and purpose, all things that only a mortal mind can provide. One of your colonists may choose to merge with the spore and ascend to a higher state of being. Alternatively, you may install a Persona Core, which is very boring. In either case, a fraction of the godling's mind will remain focused on the physical world, and it will be able to interact as a hologram with all of the desires and needs of any other holographic consciousness and capable of inflicting far more harm if displeased. Wow, and the TLDR of that one, my little Rim Rims, is very simple. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Oh, although in this case, it would really help if someone plugged in the <laughs> the giant Arcotech thing we risked our lives to get yesterday. Now we have perhaps the biggest question of all. Who will step up and become our Arco colonist? Which one of our many people are we going to sacrifice in physical form, but gain new power and new technology? And of course, we'll... Daryl, it destroys left comms range. Are you having a laugh? It's right there. I can see it. <laughs> like I was saying, who wants to be a cool-ass robot machine? in control of the ship, and honestly, I think there is a very obvious candidate. Someone who can come full circle, which is very impressive if you don't practice too often. Maybe we choose Bingus, the ship's already existing AI core, although I'm not entirely sure it's a hologram you can merge with it. Maybe we choose High Tech Redneck, whose name and technical skills and master of machines would make her a good candidate. Maybe we choose Captain Bucko himself, a captain of a ship that he himself becometh, or do we choose a far more sensible option? The Omnisire. Not only was she very coincidentally named after a machine god, but merging herself to become a machine god seems... I mean, it, I mean, you can't argue with that. I mean, it just makes perfect sense. Similarly, she began this campaign as a hologram whose consciousness was uh, corrupted from the bounds of outer space, and there was definitely not a mod conflict that caused her to act very strangely. But now we get her in her original form, her, her full-powered original form, by not only merging her with the ship and becoming a true first mate beyond oh, any other, but she also returns to her original hologram form. I think... I think it's just too good. And before we do this, while I have everybody's attention, we have an allowed area. Thank you for asking. We've had an allowed area for four episodes now. Clearly, people do not pay attention when I speak. Thank you. Omnisire, though you may have only had a squishy, fleshy body, or not entirely a squishy, fleshy body, you were missing a head for a while there. Even though you may have only joined us in this mortal coil as a fleshy, uh, spongy, spongy beast. Spon a human being, I think is the word. It's time, my friend, to go back to where you came from. Hologram town. Population. Omnisire. Oh my god. Oh my god, what is happening? What is she doing? Oh! Oh no, that doesn't look right at all. <laughs> she Obi-Wan, but she left behind her headless body. Uh, consciousness of the Omnisire. Well, it, it seems to have worked. Well, I reloaded in some sort of vain hope that it might fix things, and in fact, she's now even less visible. Uh, what if we say deactivate hologram? and then put her back out there in the world. She is she is a ghost. She is a spirit. However, that does bring me on to a fantastic suggestion from, oh. Well, okay. She is a hologram. She looks shockingly human for a hologram, but she is a hologram. There was a fantastic suggestion in the comment section yesterday, and that was why not capitalize on becoming a real flying Buckman. Now, we researched and got these afterlife caskets, which are ten little capsules we can store the brains of our dead colonists in and then project them as holograms. We could have a ship of ghosts and become a space-flying Buckman. That is kind of genius. I love the idea, and I think we'll probably start working on that today when we've finished collecting this other destroyer. But then, of course, there's so much more to do. We've, we've just opened this up massively. We have the Architect Spawn now online. We are much. Yet we could be, be, be more. 
we could be. It, it is indeed like that. Your crew feel the spore's thoughts pressing in on them. Infinite reward awaits finite effort, and effort there must be, even under ideal circumstances. It can take a consciousness decades or centuries to evolve into a true Archotech. Others have walked this road before us. Discover their workings. Let them become part of us. Doesn't sound ominous at all. Images of four mysterious pillars appear in your minds. If you could locate them, they would allow your spore to complete its evolution in less than a quantum. Meanwhile, your spore is willing to aid you in researching ultra-tech projects and will occasionally produce gifts for your crew. We will need to build an Arco-Tech uplink near your research benches. And that is going to be gigantic. Four mysterious pillars. Okay. Oh, we're in Terraria now. Arco Tech. Oh, there it is. Arco Tech Uplink. Okay, so it's just a little multi analyzer. Okay. Uh, slight problem with that is we don't really have the room for it, but I guess we could slam the research bench down here instead. Might as well turn part of this into a lab as well. That's okay. Oh! Uh, hello? The Omnicide confides in Captain Bucko that their mind is troubled. So troubled, in fact, that disturbances are filtered all the way down to the human like level of the Omnicide's fractal consciousness. So much of one's mind is built upon the beliefs learned while one was too young to question them. Now the Omnisai wonders if everything their human self believed could be wrong. If so, their new exploration of the higher levels of reality could start from a dangerously false foundation. I, too, listen to Tool. <laughs> uh, sorry? Okay. Um, discover the truth of Bucko's crew or found a uh, new idea religion. Whoa. Discover the truth of Bucko's crew or found a new idea religion. What are these options? So what does this imply? Well, I mean, this one I assume would imply that we continue with Bucko's, uh, uh, Bucko's idea religion that we have right now. But we would have to prove that it is correct or accurate or sustainable. I don't entirely know. Or we make a whole new idea religion. Look, Bucko has got us this far. God damn it, he's going to take us to the end. I will discover the truth of Bucko's crew. Your Arco Tech Spore has been signed up for a disturbing length of time. It was all of about 12 seconds. Just as your crew begins to worry, psychic joy blooms out of the Omnisire, washing over the crew like a sudden warmth. The Omnisire announces with an incredible triumph that their newly expanded consciousness has made direct contact with... With! We've made direct contact with! The exact natures of Ov's existence seem to be fundamentally beyond human understanding, as is much of this sentence. The deity seems to be either a psychic gestalt of all believers in Bucko's crew, a full Arco set that has chosen to take on the deity's name and role, or something that will exist in the future, or perhaps all of these at once. In any case, this direct contact with Blank has made the Omnisire faith in Bucko's crew absolute. All hail the one true, the one truth. Do we not have any gods for our ideology? Is that what the problem is there? Um, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we actually don't. Uh, I guess that's because it's, I mean, it's, it's authoritarian. But there are no gods. We just believe in Bucko drink. Huh. Hooray! Uh, uh, some sort of uh, deity or being or, or some extraterrestrial creature has made contents and said, Bucko, you carry on, big man. You're doing a great job. Proud of you. <laughs> you know, as giant sentient beings, I'm sure, would expect. It was the comment section. The most sentient being of all. It was as if there were thousands of voices all crying out the same thing. Our hive mind. Screaming. The same thought over and over. War caskets. Don't work. With Yeo's combat. <laughs> so anyway, it turns out all the crew on this ship are dying to, um, explosive decompression. So, I mean, all we've already got to do is just sit here and wait for all the people without spacesuits to die. Uh, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Oh, I can't help but notice there is a very appealing button that has appeared on this Arcotech Sport, and that button is Simulate to Drug. What does that do? I've had this mind with a simulated version of an organic drug. Are you saying... That the Omnisai who is currently trapped inside this Arco Spore. Oh, look, it has a mood and a psychic field strength. We have to keep her happy. Wear holographic apparel. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Let's throw on um a rum suit for old time's sake. What did that do for us exactly? Simulate apparel on this hologram. Oh. What happened? Where did you go? Where did you come from? The Omnisire. So you're telling me if we say, uh, so that's the Omnisire's mood then was, was 51%. So you're telling me we could just say Omnisire is always Yeo Town. The effects of Yeo aside to the Omnisire. R really? That's, that's actually incredible.
<laughs> Just permanent psychic Yeo. Oh, that's quite handy. How useful. Oh, there were also some suggestions as well for ways to keep the armor repaired. So we don't get a repeat of what happened to Doggy when we boarded that last ship and their armor broke midway through. Particularly because a lot of people have said we're going to be up against a lot more stronger enemies. So I was actually trying to hold out for the repair bed. And that was one of the final research. We got the repair shelves with the mechanite reassembly from Vanilla Expanded. With that research and the fancy furniture, we can get these repair beds. So as they sleep, their armor or whatever they're wearing will be repaired. I'm not sure if it affects the weapons, but I will get out, go ahead and replace pretty much everything on the ship with this. Don't think Omnisar and Bucko need to share a bed anymore, given that one of them is, um, you know, a giant godly machine. Or maybe that's more of a reason they should share a bed. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to judge them. Oh, these heavy cargo shuttles are cool. We can fit absolutely everybody on. And if we send them in hologram form, they can literally never die. If we build them in the core of the ship, around the AI core, around the bridge, you would have to destroy the ship to destroy the crew. That could be an idea. Of course, I'm not going to send everybody. We're going to leave uh, Captain Bucker. We're going to leave the Omnicide because I don't know what happens if you send a hologram over there. I don't want to risk losing the Siege Breaker armor or whatever. Uh, yeah, let's send those guys. Get in there, squad. Oh! There are a lot more people aboard than I thought there would be. What a pleasant surprise. Uh, I tipped Redneck, hacked that bridge. We're almost ready to leave. Now, a lot of people are saying maybe you should swap out the Gorse Rifles for laser guns, which is a very fair point. I do think we're most likely to kill our own people with these bloody Gorse Rifles. Come on, I tipped Redneck. There you go. The time's the charm. Was that necessary? <laughs> Person hiding out in this room just immediately blown to pieces. Wow. You know what? A lot more of this ship survived than I expected. Okay, let's send it over. Now, I've already measured out where we need the ship to go. So the central line of the ship needs to line up with that right there. That should be perfect. I will double check. But that, I think, is it. The neckline where it begins there should line up with this bit here. And then that bit's in the center of the ship. That all seems good. That is 100% the correct place, because that's dead in the middle, right? Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Ship's lined up. Now, here's the next plan to make things super, super simple. And my God, if this works, I can I can put my feet up. We turn on the cloaking device, and I can go outside and enjoy nature. We take this blueprint here, and then I say, cool, rooms one. That sounds about right. And then we just simply take that, and then, oh, the game breaks. Oh, and then we line it up over the top, and we say, go mad. Was that correct? I certainly looks bloody correct. There you go, and that's all the restoration work done as well. I just have to take away this bit here, otherwise that's gonna look very strange. Okay, okay, okay. And then I just gotta fill in the gaps. It's that simple. Oh my god, this is gonna look incredible when it's done. <laughs> oh, please, please. Please finish the ship, please. It's been two hours. <laughs> And I'm not even kidding. It's been two hours of sitting here, cloaked, revamping this friggin' destroyer. Please. <laughs> I just want to see my children. <laughs> Please let me go. You may have noticed if you cast your eyes over to the left-hand side of the screen, we're completely out of steel. Uh, well, not, not technically true. Uh, somewhere down here. Uh, where am I going? <laughs> it's pickled my brain. I'm like my granddad trying to work out to change the TV channel. Oh, it's uh, it's over here somewhere. He says picking up the friggin' telephone. We've got over here a lot of a lot, a lot of steel, a lot of steel that for some reason, for some reason they're not doing anything with. What are we doing? We're fueling rocket engines. We're not fucking flying anywhere, Kroom. What are you doing? Smelting metal from slag. Thank you. I don't know why you had to leave the room for that. You know what? You're not allowed to leave. Sit down. Sit down and smell. I'm gonna fill however long it's remaining in this episode with me singing a jaunty tune. Then I might be able to go to bed within the next week. I hate you, space pirate Captain Bucko Drink. I hate you. I've never hated a more character more. Oh, that's not true. Don't forget about Monkey Chef. Masterwork, you say? Yeah, masterwork is right. Oh, it's a laser sniper. I don't really care about that too much. Masterwork is right because look at this vessel. The combination of three destroyers one cruiser and the original space station that we launched from the planet with a heat capacity of 52,840 which i'm well aware isn't actually that much <laughs> but look at uh look at the grid 
73,000 watt days with 113,000 watts excess right now. That's ridiculous. Maybe I should send something. I had to turn these on overdrive while we were building because we just weren't making enough power. I think we can definitely afford to turn a couple of them off here. Uh, how are we looking? That's probably safe. We'll leave a couple on overdrive. I'm sure we'll be able to get enough uranium going forward now to stay on top of things. The only thing I'm concerned about, right, is we've built a staggering amount of heat sinks and coolers. Especially, like, all of these wings are basically dedicated exclusively to, to that. So, work with me here. I think these middle sections need to be reserved for guns. And I'm thinking probably torpedo launches at this point. Uh, and then with, with actual lasers, railguns, plasma cannons, whatever, coming back up into this top section of the ship. The only concern I have is both of these wings are gigantic freezers. They're one giant room, all filled with, well, with freezing couple of problems with that a if the shield breaks and an enemy torpedo hits like here ruptures this wall this whole wing is pointless at that point because you can't vent you know when it counts as outdoors right or you can't sorry the, the, the air conditioners aren't gonna work when it counts as outdoors you can't transfer the heat the, the better way to phrase that if i wasn't an idiot would be the heat things don't work in the vacuum of space similarly on this side too so i guess the sensible idea now uh let's not break the habit of a lifetime here i'm but i'm thinking i might be ambitious is to throw down a couple of doors and just separate the rooms out I, th I think that makes a lot of sense they called me a madman i'm calling me a madman at this point this has taken <laughs> a shockingly long time we'll just divide it in three we won't go crazy with it because that way it means if the like i said the top part gets hit there are still two other functional parts i think i'll probably make cooling overall less effective because it isn't one giant room so, you know, it relies on the whole thermal grid working correctly. And, uh, of course, as we've seen, that's absolutely been the case. <laughs> the real concern I've got. Oh, I think it's a very valid concern. Let's say, I don't know, this cooler breaks down in the deepest, darkest valves of the ship. They have to walk through an entire wing of the ship right to the end there in minus 273 degrees C. And for the most part, even though we've got very good armor and shit, it's still not going to be good enough. Minus 214 there for Bucko. Minus 214 for the Omnissiah. High tip right net minus 254 because she has the Masterwork Siege Breaker. Really, we should just keep trying to churn out legendary gear. But for the most part, I mean, I, I mean, shit. Look, if like Neo or Winston or Haynes in their war caskets were to go in there, they, they'd freeze to death. So that bit of special is doing me a concern. But other than that, I think this is going to be fantastic. And I think there is one thing I have overlooked besides the... Uh, you know, the new, well, the new technology first and foremost. But besides the torpedo tubes, and that is, of course, the spinal capacitors. Where the hell would we even put that at this point? I could mount one on, like, this side of the wing and extend it up within the bounds of the shield generator. That could work actually pretty decently well. And we could have a pretty sizable spinal capacitor on that as well. Okay, this section then. Just big fuck off torpedo tubes. I think that's a very, very good idea. Of course, this section on both sides of the ship. There you go. Fantastic. This is going to look so good when it's done. Holy shit. I, I, it's coming together and I'm like finally seeing it. And, and I'm thinking this is not terrible. It's obviously very, you know, it's very impressionist. It's, it's very much a, 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 a silly take on a spaceship. We could fill in all these holes. You know, we could not have a giant ring in the middle here. We could replace these solar panels with heat sinks. You can make a much more powerful vessel. But it does look pretty fucking cool. Now, I look up here and I see a lot of wasted potential. I think we need more plasma turrets because those things were putting in some really, really good work against the mechanoid sphere. So let's throw in a couple more large plasma turrets. And then really, we just got to fit in whatever we can at this point. Got to make it still accessible. Let's throw in another laser turret either side too. We've got a lot of rail guns. Like a lot of rail guns. And we could certainly ram in a few more alongside these torpedo launchers. Let's throw in a few laser turrets on on this side and then maybe on the other side we throw down some plasma turrets though i do like the symmetry ah <sighs> i can't deny it okay hold on let me go swap out some of those lasers on the other side interstellar trade ship hostile we can attack that without actually counting as piracy god damn it i'm in even if we're half built right now i'm in let's go advance shields up you gotta have confidence in these things my friends and then because no one believes me permitted wow <laughs> oh Livingston is still set on his recreation schedule from where he was set on the planet. Shields are online. Then we say all weapons. Fire. Oh, I kind of feel like a bully. Are we the bad guys? Attacking an interstellar trade ship. I, I, I mean, that's objectively a terrible thing to do. But this is space piracy, my friends. You may fire when ready, Captain Bucko. You may fire when ready. Look at the heat! 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, we're not firing. I guess because we've only got the railguns in range right now. How are they outrunning us? I guess they're quite light. I mean, they are a trade ship after all, and we are fucking gigantic by comparison. <laughs> are they in range of our plasma guns yet? Almost. Knock out the engines. Then we can... That'll do it. That'll do it. I mean, look at the heat levels on our ship, though. My God. I know it's not a good test because we're only firing some of our weapons, but Jesus. Uh, yeah, let's take out all these engines. Get them dead in the air. Then we can just pause and pick them apart as we need to. Send our people into the back here and try and keep as much of it alive so that piracy is a success. This is what it's all been building up to. Oh, my God. They're almost in plasma range. We've got to be careful we don't blow them to smithereens with this. Come on. Come on. Cross the threshold. Come on. Any second now. Was that it? Railguns? Oh, God, Bucko. No, 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 no. There needs to be something left to pick apart, you moron. What a terrible captain. What a terrible space pirate. All right. Take that one out. Oh, God. Here come the plasma cannons. Well, we only hit the heat sinks. Now I think maybe we stop firing and we go boarding party. Oh, this is good. This feels like proper space piracy. This is fantastic. Get on board. All of you go besides Bucko. Are they still shooting us? More importantly, are we still shooting them? Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop forced attack. Stop forced attack. We need something left to pick apart here, pal. We did blow something off there. Luckily, not their cargo, which I assume is kept in this section. Hello? Oh, are they, they're still firing at us. You are never getting through our shields. You will never get this. Yar. Yar. Transport pods arrived. Yar. Space piracy. Ken didn't bring a weapon. Ken's there for moral support. Get him, squad. Get him, squad. Oh, shit. There's some in that wing over there. Kill them all. Just imagine the horror. The horror. You're trying to do an innocent interstellar trade. Friggin' Winston waves himself, drops out in a war casket. Bucko's flag is across the horizon. Ripped apart by war caskets. They're simple traders, damn it. What's the Omnicide doing? Oh, she's got a laser gun. It doesn't work with search and destroy. Ah, oh, okay, that's a problem. A laser gun doesn't seem that effective either. Ugh. Bloody hell, there's loads of them. Well, I mean, I suppose some defensive force will know. Maybe you should get out of here, Omnisai. Maybe you should back off. Ah, uh, sorry? <laughs> Screaming, I'm going to beat you at a, uh, at a hologram is, is very, very big brain. I mean, not that they've got any big brain left. I think that laser weapon is probably going to be quite good for getting through doors, though, right? Because it looks as if it's... If we, like, stand right next to it... Oh, it's pretty good. Okay, that's not bad at all. It seems very effective, but the problem is it's got such a massive spread. But if we're, if we're still a block away just trying to aim for a door, it's, it seems like a pretty safe bet. Crack it open, Omnisire. Might as well just beeline it straight for the bridge, huh? We didn't have to land where we did. You know, it just felt like more of a siege that way. Oh, it lights people on fire! Oh, well, that's way better. Okay, here's the AI core. This is what we have to hack, right? Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, watch out for the turrets. Light them up. You got this. Oh, it stuns turrets too. Oh my God, it's got built-in EMP. Oh, you fanny. Well, let's get the lasers in so we don't accidentally do any friendly fire. Now, I assume this is some sort of illegal trading operation because there was no penalty for this. This wasn't an act of piracy. We've got no notoriety, but we will. Once we've gone up against like an actual ship that can that can put down a bit of firepower so we can test the shields a bit better, we can get into more of a prolonged fight, then I'll be testing it. Then if it works, we're gonna we're gonna go all out pirate. Every bloody trade ship we see is going down. Ah, you okay? I mean you're a hologram, I don't know how you can not be okay, ultimately. There he is, common section. Insta hack Livingston. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, it's been, it's been very it's been very contentious this series. Very contentious. War caskets. Why is he not taking the guy that can insta hack, etc., etc.? What are you guys trading? A Stellox crown. A Stellox shirt. Did you murder a Stellox? They've got nothing on board. We've been thoroughly bamboozled. Hello? What? Your architect spore chuckles to itself. Life is growth. Sometimes it is overgrowth. Perhaps you should re reflect on this as your cancers develop. Apparently, some of your crew have randomly de developed carcinomas. Oh, we're playing the fucking Dungeon Master now. <laughs> Is this what I've been doing to people? <laughs> oh! The Architect's board gave Bucko drink cancer. What the fuck? That's messed up. Bucko's missing an arm. Oh, he's missing a... Wait, what? Since when did that happen? 
Okay, well, we'll solve that in a second. Uh, well, that's a bit fucked up. We're gonna take out the pelvis, because you can survive without a pelvis, just to clarify. You don't- you don't need a pelvis. Anybody else? Okay, well, obviously not the hologram. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. We got plenty of healer mechs here, so I'm really not bothered at all. Uh, really, we should probably heal Neo. <laughs> I've, I've been remembering to use them occasionally, okay? But I might have been wasting on things like scars and other things that affect mood rather than literal brain damage and missing lungs. All in all, I'd say that was a job well done. We would just take everything. Absolutely nowhere near. Wow. Um, I'm guessing a lot of that is in steel slag, though. Absolutely it is. No, thank you. I think we're all right. So I don't really need all the dead bodies. So I'm like, I'll leave that one behind if that's okay. Well, I think it's fairly safe to say we made off like bandits. B because we were. We were bandits. We robbed a trade ship. Hmm. Mechanoid hijacked who now? I could be persuaded. So anyway, I thought it would be a good way to test our shields. Now I have, I, I'm under no illusion that <laughs> oh, madam, so nice to see you. Wow, this is, um, we're dead. Okay, that's fine. Uh, right. I'm turning on roofs to put it into perspective here. Um, yes, we do have a startlingly small amount of guns compared to them. The grants of these are the small guns, right? Oh, no, those are the medium ones. Those are the big ones. And then they've got spinal barrels and multiple torpedo bays, a staggering amount of rail guns. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I, I'm under no illusion that we cannot defeat this ship. They've got those fancy green shields. I'm very afraid of the green shields. However, I want to retreat. Hear me out. And at least see if the, the shields can take a bit of a beating from that many rail guns. This is for science. We're going to go and poke the bear for science and then be very shocked when the bear bites us and mauls us horribly. Okay, can we outpace them? That's the first question, because if we can't, we die. Uh, we certainly can. Though the game is running at a <laughs> frighteningly slow speed. I mean, there's a lot going on. Oh! Boy, that's a lot of torpedoes, isn't it? Wow. Uh, our shields are getting pounded, but... But... Okay, they're already at half capacity. Well, that's a horrifying, horrifying indictment on all of this work. Essentially going to waste. Though I can't imagine, to be fair, there are many larger ships than a mechanoid-controlled leviathan. I can't imagine it gets much bigger than this. And here's a plus side. I didn't even fuel up all these engines, and we're still outrunning them. So I'm, I'm taking that as an absolute win. Oh my god, we're out of food. I turned it all into fucking chem fuel. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I'm not the quartermaster. You can't blame me for these things. We've still got to escape. Even with half our engines, we can outrun it. That's the important thing. And that's the pirate lifestyle, you know? They weren't sailing around the high seas, taking on, you know, royal dreadnoughts or whatever. They were, they were keeping a low profile, getting what they can, and getting out where they couldn't. That's the pirate life for me. So this right here is a certified bucko promise. There will be no more shipbuilding going forward. What I will do, well, I mean, obviously there'll be tweaks and changes, but I'm not going to dedicate, you know, five hours of my life to upgrading the ship any further. We don't need to. We've got the shape down. All the work we need to do is done, right? All the RNG-based things, all the things that were a bit more dependent on encounters, things like that, sticking on the dreadnoughts, that's all done. So in between episodes, I'll use our ridiculous amount of resources to... Start planning out some spinal capacitors. I won't put the finishing touches on it, because that, I think, is cool enough that we would we would do it in an episode. But things like double-checking thermal grids and readjusting the amount of coolers per, per heat sinks and that type of boring shit. Throwing down a few more laser cannons, maybe putting a few extensions on here and there. Throwing down some more actual turrets. Shit like that. I'm going to sort all that out between episodes. I'm going to throw down some more artificial ecosystems, so that ideally... Let me just double-check if we've got it in here. Vanilla Expanded Settlers adds chem root which we can literally grow into fuel rather than growing rice and then turning that into fuel. Cut out the middlemen, throw down a bunch more of those, get that going. And this will be our last building episode. It is nothing but rocketing straight to victory from here on out. And then, of course, as we get new technology, we'll explore that as it is unlocked. But as we are in our current form, I'm going to do everything we need to do between episodes here because I think I have a, a good vision of what needs to be done. If you have any hints, tips, suggestions, and other buzzwords, basically tell me what to do, because I cannot think for myself, because I'm a YouTuber, and that's just how it works. But honestly, 
I like the ship. I, I do like the ship. I, I think it looks pretty cool. It was never going to be the, you know, the most optimized, fantastic, save our ship ship ever. Because I wanted it to be a kit bash. I thought it was the most pirate thing to do is to steal other people's ships and glue them together. That sounds incredible. And that's exactly what we've done here. We've glued together three destroyers, a cruiser, and our original space station, and linked them together haphazardly. And we filled the gaps that linked them together with guns. Lots and lots of guns. So tomorrow, we do a little Arco research. We track down those pillars. And Bucko becomes the greatest pirate captain you've ever seen. And I think as a kind of quiet other end goal, I would love to take on whatever people would consider the strongest ship going. So if you've got any ideas for that one, I'm, I'm interested to hear it and we'll see what we can do with that. I'm kind of curious if we could somehow turn this kind of haphazard decorated ship into into something that is capable of taking out those, those those big powerful ships. That'd be really interesting. More importantly, thank you all for watching. And, and more importantly, on top of that, thank you all for you know, for sticking with the series. It, it had a massive amount of views when we took off to space. It did drop off quite significantly. So if you're still here, if you're enjoying this, I appreciate that for a lot of people. It's very different to what we normally do on the channel. You know, we, we explore characters, their backstories, their interactions, the loss of those guys, and, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But with this, it, is, it has been a massive, you know, a detraction from that. It has just been building a spaceship for quite a long time. The characters haven't changed at all besides getting some different armor, and that's about it. Uh, and there isn't much room for that, but... Thank you if you are still enjoying it. But we are moving into the end game now. So the Avengers of Bucko Drink are gonna come to a very quiet close. Well, I say quiet close. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna ramp it down, but it is gonna be ridiculous <laughs> along the way, I hope. Thank you, of course, to the patrons for allowing this series to exist in the first place. Thank you to Desync, Chaotic Entertainment, The Illustrious Gareth, Garth Wick, Texas Yardbird, Lion666, Fizzle Buns, Deets, Q, Average Nobody, X Doctor Don, MD, My Name Isn't Dio Passi, 965, Alice to the Rescue, Moira, Phoenix, Odinson, Brittany Lee, and Falcon Alaris for their support the executive produced is over on Patreon. Thank you for being there. And thank you as well to Tesnaf, Randoman9989, Xenos the Painter, Callum James 3, Bo 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 Bo, Atreus Sen, Nia, Infectious, Lively Life, Logical Builder, Radamuth, Plation, Wifty, Astro Boogie, Sync9, and Koaka Arkeva. I hope that was even remotely close to your name. Please let me know how I did. And more importantly, see what's tomorrow.